Now, the next layer it has to pass through is the pupil. Um, some pupils just don't dilate very well. Uh, younger people, younger people, you just put a little whiff of the of the smell of the tropicamide around them, and their pupils open wide open. And the bigger that pupil, the the more of that cone you can push through there, the better the binocular stereoscopic vision. The more you can push the light source off to the side, you just have a nice big area to work through. That small pupil, man, that is hard to work through. A small pupil, and this uh, sometimes in diabetics, sometimes for whatever reason. Uh, people who've had cataract surgery, older people in their 70s or so who've had cataract surgery, sometimes that pupil just won't open. And you're trying to push that cone of energy through that small opening. Well, uh, first of all, you're blocking a lot of energy, so the amount of delivered energy might be greatly reduced. Uh, but also, that might block the focusing beams. So now you are having to rely on secondary and tertiary mechaniz mechanisms of focus, which is a little disconcerting, and or you might just have to work harder at having the patient you know, move their head and move their eyes to get the floaters to maybe move a little bit more anterior. The more anterior the floater, the, more, the better the visualization, the better delivery of energy. If it's posterior, uh, peripheral, uh, or, and or they just are very highly myopic and they have a you know, relatively longer eyeball, those are going to be tough eyes to work with. 